Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to this new low mass mission on this channel. This will be my attempt at a low mass mission to Moho and back. The craft that I have put together weighs exactly 1447 kilograms on launch. This mass excludes the mass of the Kerbal, which is the standard on both my own and ZGL Paka's minimalist missions list. And the Kerbal will not be having any cargo coming with them, such as an EVA pack or parachute. I decided to make this mission a voiceover because, considering all of the trickery and optimizations I made throughout this mission, it really wouldn't do it a justice to have it be a simple music video like all of my other videos. So, hopefully I'm doing this right. If you have any feedback on my commentary, please let me know down in the description. The first thing that you might notice is that the fairing does not seem to cover all of the parts that are on this craft. Specifically, the fuel tanks and the octagonal struts appear especially egregiously outside of it. However, thanks to the very unrealistic uh, fairing physics in this game, I was able to get this to work. The fairing itself is a sloped cone shape to perfectly optimize and minimize the amount of surface area while keeping all of the parts occluded. Those octagonal struts on there are to occlude the nodes, and the rest of the node occlusion area left is covered by the engine and intake. As you can see, I have skipped the mass for a decoupler by burning off the intake and the engine, and instead of in prior missions where the wings are burned off, I had the wing attached through the intake to the side of the craft, so once that blows up, the wing is expelled. You may also have noticed that this entire ascent profile was done with the UI of the game hidden. I was able to do this not through any skill of piloting, but rather through creating a standardized set of moves in MechJeb's program function that would always execute the same thing at the same time every time. I did this not just so that I could get cinematic shots in the beginning, but also to optimize the ascent more efficiently, and therefore cut the mass from the fuel used to reach orbit. Unlike in previous missions, I only have two solar panels to complete the circularization with the ion stage. I found out that by angling the craft more radially, I was able to get to orbit with a lot less thrust from the ion engine available. However, this does decrease the efficiency of the ion engine itself because of the decreased electrical charge, so I needed to be especially careful with my ascent, and I had multiple different plans for how much velocity I had at certain points, but in this mission I was able to get it to work out with just over 4200 meters per second of delta V in orbit. There is a way I can squeeze just a little bit more delta V out of this stage, however, with Bill's special EVA construction abilities, I was able to take off one of the solar panels and get around 100 meters per second more delta V in orbit. This may not seem like much, however, it did turn out to be critically important to allowing this mission to work, and it only came at the sacrifice of having to do smaller burns further away from the sun. And speaking of smaller burns, here are some of them now. I split up the maneuver to get to the MUN into 35 meter per second periapsis kicks, Mostly because of the limited battery charge available to me, I could only get about 50 meters per second per charge, but also to be more efficient. My first destination will be that of the moon. I am not landing on it, however. I will be gravity assisting off of it twice to get into an orbit of Kerbal. This isn't quite enough to get anywhere, so what I'm going to be doing next is encountering Kerbin again and using the MUN to slowly increase my relative velocity until it's enough to actually reach another planet. This took quite a long time, so I'm not going to bother showing all of the different maneuvers that I did to correct myself to get proper encounters, but just be aware that it took Roughly 20 hours elapsed over the entire mission of just playing with maneuver nodes trying to get things to work. I would also like to take a moment to mention that there is a very high possibility that there are some things missing in this video from the actual mission. 
there were many points throughout where I had to restart from earlier points because of having done gravity shifts inefficiently or having done too much of a correction maneuver at some point and having to restart. So there is a very high likelihood that I missed something while editing this video. On screen now is our first assist with Eve. This assist sets up another assist with Kerbin and then that Kerbin assist goes back to Eve. The Kerbin assist in this sequence does a little bit more than just line up our encounter with Eve. It also times the encounter with Eve so that way we are encountering it when its orbit lines up with Moho's apoapsis and also its inclination which just happens to line up by sheer coincidence. The next part of our Keplerian playground of activities is going to be doing the messenger assists off of Moho. This entails waiting until I am as far away from my encounter with Moho's orbit to do a deep space maneuver, raising my orbit to be tangent with that of Moho, and then assisting off of Moho to lower the apoapsis. This greatly reduces the capture burn necessary to get into low moho orbit and as a result my capture burn was only around 250 meters per second. However, I later discovered that I had done these somewhat improperly and I could have actually saved a lot more from this part. Something I didn't realize at the time but I know now is that doing the correct deep space maneuvers is more optimal if you do them in increments of around 30 meters per second. However, at first I was kind of just winging them, so they ended up being a little bit suboptimal. At long last, we have arrived at our capture burn at Moho. Thanks to the optimizations we have done beforehand, this capture burn was not as substantial as it may have been if we had not done any of the assists. Unfortunately, the burn is so substantial that it is still impossible to capture on the dark side efficiently, so we are coming in opposite to Moho's rotation. However, because the surface is only rotating at around 2 meters per second, it's still not that much lost. The landing at Moho had proven itself to be a little bit more challenging than I had anticipated. I had had a go at this beforehand on a previous attempt that didn't quite have enough delta V after reaching Moho orbit to get home, and it had taken me roughly 10 tries to actually get from low Moho orbit down to the surface. The reason for this is because my thrust is not all that much greater than my weight on Moho, so I need to make sure that I am constantly flaring out to keep my vertical speed as low as possible. However, doing this for any length of time immediately means that I am losing delta V to gravity. So I really needed to make sure that my landing had my vertical and horizontal speed cancel out at the same time. Additionally, I wanted to land on a mountain, so that way when I take off again, I can lower my altitude slightly as I burn horizontal, so that way I can mitigate gravity losses there too. But because I am not too familiar with the surface of Moho, I wasn't able to properly optimize this. There are some mountains approaching 7,000 kilometers that are not on the equatorial plane, but I figured that the savings in fuel that would be incurred if I had gone for this weren't worth finding the mountain. And of course, no opportunity was missed to save a little bit of fuel on the landing by hitting Bill's head on the ground to absorb some of the shock of impact. After spending some time to plant flags and footprints on the surface, it's time to consider how we're going to return home. Sitting on the surface of Moho, we have 1500 meters per second of delta V remaining. The eagle eye amongst you may have noticed that that is not enough to return home in the same way that we left. We started with 4300 meters per second of delta V in Kerbin orbit, which means it took roughly 2000 meters per second to get to the surface of Moho. Those of you who've passed first grade math may see that that leaves 500 meters per second of delta V that we do not have for the return trip. Interestingly, I realized that this was likely because of my lack of skill when it came to gravity assists the first time around, as I had wasted hundreds of delta V on correction maneuvers that could have been better spent later in the mission. It was now time to perform the messenger assists once again to get back to EVE. I had taken what I had learned th through the previous 
round of assists and made sure that all of my deep space maneuvers were limited to around 40 meters per second except for the first one. The reason for this was because the first time I had tried this I had allowed myself to use up to 100 meters per second per deep space maneuver but after finishing this I had barely enough velocity to reach EVE and less than 10 meters per second of delta V left in the ion end so I had to go back and redo it and this time it worked out. The only real difference between the assists this time around was that instead of raising my orbit to become tangent with MOHO I was instead lowering it to have a higher relative velocity to it when I encountered it next. There is actually a potential way to save delta v on this part of the mission which is through the use of a technique called a sphere of influence pumping i'm not entirely sure how it works or even how to do it but it basically entails encountering the planet that you want to rendezvous with multiple times without any significant deep space maneuver aside from a correction and slowly molding your orbit to match theirs as you just saw i moved the battery from where it was on the craft to be right in front of Bill's head. This was because I thought that it would help protect him from overheating significantly when I eventually had to air capture at Kerbin. However, it didn't seem to provide that much of a shield, and because of where I had placed it, I wasn't able to actually move something more significant like the solar panel or the reaction wheels. So, by now, the amount of delta V left in the craft has dwindled to less than 10 meters per second, and as a result of this, I need to be very careful with how I spend it. Earlier in the mission, I was a lot more flippant with my corrections, as I have previ previously mentioned. However, even that wasn't as suboptimal as it perhaps could have been. Usually, I was spending about 5 meters per second per correction, but this clearly wasn't an option at this point because I had less delta V available to me than one of those corrections. As a result, I needed to make sure I was always planning at least one assist in advance, and this would take a lot longer to plan out due to things like inclination and orbital periods messing with the way that the game displays my trajectory. In fact, at one point, while trying to get my orbital period to be on a one-to-one -one resonance with Kerbin, I recall a time to apoapsis appearing of more than 10,000 years. Obviously, I was not going to wait for this, so it took a little bit more working with the maneuver nodes to get it to line up. After a multitude of lunar assists, our relative velocity is now slow enough that we can error capture. I had to do this by ejecting Bill with the ejector seat, which also yielded 40 meters per second of extra delta V, and then his drag would capture into a, an orbit. I also made sure that the periapsis of this orbit was high enough that he would not burn up on the subsequent pass, and then just aero break to a low orbit. Because of the shortcuts that I had taken in order to get to this point, I found that Bill was not able to be deorbited on his own in low carbon orbit. This had worked in testing, but by this point I wasn't able to precisely control my descent, and this made this a lot more complicated than it needed to be. Because I was just so frustrated with the mission at this point, I employed some trickery with getting him to survive the deorbit. Basically what I did was I did a fizz warp much higher than the game usually would allow using better time warp, and this would allow Bill to survive the re-entry for some reasons that are definitely deep space kraken approved i was a bit worried that bill would not be able to survive the impact with the ground at this point but since his terminal velocity was so low at around 30 meters per second and me running my game at 180 frames per second there was very little room for him to clip into the ground and actually die so really there was actually no threat here and with that somewhat uncomfortable landing, Bill has officially completed his mission of going to Moho and back with a 1.447 ton craft. It only took one third of a millennium, but I think the journey was worth it. I would like to end off with a enormous thank you to Proxima, Domni Kerman, Lieutenant Duckweed, and Celeste Astronautics for helping me out with this mission. 
Proxima was instrumental in getting the gravity assist to work. Celeste Astronautics was the main inspiration behind the design of the rocket. Domini Kerman also helped me out with gravity assist. And Lieutenant Duckweed helped me out with some of the heating stuff. And the last person I would like to thank is you for watching.